Hey everybody, welcome to the Dad Challenge Podcast. My name is Josh. Welcome back. The Christmas break has been nice. And uh, today we're going to be talking about eight passengers and this debacle that went down right before Christmas where Ruby and her husband, what the hell is his name? I don't even know his name. Frank? Frankie Frank? <laughs> if his name's Frank, that's amazing. Frank Frankie? I don't think it's Frank. But basically they said they're not going to give two of their children Christmas this year and they're instead going to gift them the gift of being a dick face. So let's do it. If you didn't know anything about eight passengers, Ruby Frank is the matriarchy of the eight passengers clan. Okay. The husband, damn, I wish I remembered his name, um, is a professor at BYU. I'm not sure what he's a professor of. I want to say engineering, but I could be wrong. Um, and Ruby is part of this, this YouTube channel or this place or she's contracted. I don't know connections. And I want to take a look at this connections thing before we dive in. Actually, you know what? Well, yeah, let's do it. So Ruby is, I don't know if she's a counselor, if she is part business owner, whatever the case may be, of this place called Connections. I think Ruby and her husband both are. And if you go to About Us, author, educator, mother. I don't want to read that. <clears throat> My style is compassionate yet direct and clear of what is necessary to fully change and champion any addictive or self-destructive behavior, whether it be ravenous addictions, feeling of worthlessness or inadequacy, conflicts in relationships, intimacy problems, blah, blah, blah. Uh, love to see work with people and see them change. I'm very passionate. I received my Bachelor of Art degree in English and my graduate work in educational psychology, earning a Master's of Science and eventually my clinical license as a licensed professional counselor. Something tells me she's a Bachelor of Arts and then got a license as counselor. I don't think that she is like a doctor of anything. So... Right there is my big red flag of this lady is just probably a Mormon who has a counseling firm for other Mormons. And we know that Ruby and Kevin are very, 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 very strict when it comes to how they raise their children. Look, I'm a strict parent myself. I think you're going to find more strict type parents in a Christian community, Mormon community, whatever you're raised in, um, because you want your kids to kind of follow in a more morale, a more moral upbringing, right? We don't want drugs and alcohol in our house. We don't want drinking. We don't want vaping. We don't want any of that stuff. That's a zero tolerance rule in my house. Okay. When it comes to Ruby Frank and things, I think it goes a little bit beyond that. And it's just basically straight kids being kids. And there's no excuse to not give a 10 and eight year old Christmas, specifically when you're running ads with them advertising toys while you're making money off of it, Ruby and Kevin. So not only did they do that, they didn't give their two kids Christmas because they're instead gifting them love. <laughs> it was ridiculous. You got to go watch my video. It's very eye-opening. And now they're like, they've shut all their comments off on their Instagram, which is, guys, I got to tell you this again. Very important that you know this. If you go into a, a family vlogger, or any Instagram influencer, so here's this ad that they did with their children, okay? And they made thousands of dollars from this ad, okay? Thousands of dollars off this ad if not more. But you see down here, it says comments in this post have been limited. If you go to every one of their posts, comments in this post have been limited. Comments in the post have been limited. This is such a cowardly thing, but I get it. I understand that you want to live in an echo chamber because you don't want people to tell you you're wrong. But Ruby is a parenting influencer. That's what she does for a living. So when you can't even open up your chat, and I, I, you know, it's their platform, do what you're going to do with it. But when you close down conversation because you're being ratioed for it, and people are often asking, what's ratio mean? It means you're just being like, you're being told off in the internet way, right? People are ratioing you, meaning the ratio is, is a negative towards you, okay? Um, it's ratio is basically a Twitter thing. Someone says this is a ratio, and then that person gets more likes than the other. It's basically, that's what it is. But I say ratioing, meaning that she's getting a lot of pushback, a lot of big time pushback from even her fans about what she did. But when you turn your comments off on Instagram, your engagement decreases big time because no one's going to comment. No one's going to come back. That is a win. That is a win. That is a win. Every time one of these a-holes does something stupid, they, the first thing they do is shut off the ability for anybody to have a conversation with them because they don't want hate, right? They don't, don't come at me with your hate. But at the same time, when your own fans are coming at you to say, you are a douche, it's okay. But I take this as a personal win because their engagement drops dramatically, okay? Which means that they make less money, which means that they let me have less followers. They get out of the algorithm. This is all good things. So Ruby and, and Kevin are flailing as a channel, big time. 
because family vlogging on its is if we looked at all the metrics this year from last year they're down i want to say 70 percent people are starting to catch on to the disgustingness of exploiting your children online and it is crazy we're going to cover something this week uh, mama max if you never heard of this guy there was something trending on twitter the other day and it just said youtube has to take a side because they're siding with Plutos and exploiters and people who take advantage of children. And they are every single step of the way. There is no reason to allow kids on a platform that is monetized. I mean, unless you're going to make it just for kids, which hear me out. I still don't agree with, but at the same time, it's better. I think none of these, if these are just all about family stuff, but the kids are the central focus specifically when it comes to eight passengers, they come to watch the kids. They've got a teenage daughter. They got a teenage son. Those get the highest engagement on their channels. And they exploited that for the years and years. All that to say, when it led up to this point where Ruby said, oh yeah, we're also not going to give two of our six kids Christmas. People flipped. I flipped. Ruby's also the one that said she didn't get, she, when her five-year-old forgot her lunch, she wants her to starve. She wants her to learn that hard, visceral lesson. These people are out here, and I'm not saying that what they're doing necessarily is wrong. I will say yes, not giving your kid Christmas is wrong. Now, I've had problems with my kids all the time. You have teenagers. This is a normal behavior. I will never take Christmas away from my kids. No matter how bad they are, you're still going to get all your presents that we bought for you. I just Christmas is not something you mess with, in my, in my opinion. So, um, but what they do is they go and tell you how to do all these things and they, they go a little bit too far. And in the end, what they do is they alienate their children. Not only are they exploiting them and not paying them and all this stuff and giving their privacy away on the internet, acne, periods, puberty, you know, problems with friend, girlfriends, all the first kisses, all the shit gets put on the internet, medical issues, all gets put on the internet. The kids don't benefit anything from it because Ruby says, when you're 18, you're out. She doesn't pay her children. Okay. She makes all the money and exploits them. And then. Also tells everybody when they're having major issues. So let's get to this thing, Kevin. We saw Ruby's, but here's Kevin's answer um, to the flack that they were getting. And then we're going to go to the connections lady. And she also doubles down on this bullshit. I just want to add into this. The world has these definitions of what love and tenderness look like. I watch all these. Chris okay. Are they going to Christianize the shit out of this? Because I'm, I'm going to tear it down. The world, meaning what? Who? Who's the world? You mean anybody who is not a believer in Jesus? Excluding Mormons, because Mormons don't believe in Jesus. Not the real Jesus. So, But he thinks they do. So we'll, for, in, for all intents and purposes, I'll allow that language here, but they don't. But that's what he's saying. If you don't believe in Jesus, you are the world. But let's see where he's going with that. It shows that, that I used to just love, because I feel all warm and fuzzy, and... This year, I watch them, and I'm like, oh, gross. Because Warm and Fuzzy in the show is always about, at the end, the, the, the kid just got whatever they wanted. No, that's not Warm and Fuzzy. People are angry. They see just bypassing the whole entire thing that two of your six children literally are going to sit there. Well, six, sorry, two of your, two of your... Yeah, two of your six children, while four of them are going to open presents and they get to sit there and be gifted to love. That's what people are angry about, you douchebag. When you have six children, sorry, the rules are different. If you have one kid, sure. If you have six kids, sorry, rules are different. You can't alienate kids. Kids are, especially 10 and 8-year-olds, let's be real. What could possibly a 10 and an 8-year-old have done to warrant missing Christmas? Again, are they cooking meth in your basement? What have they done? I have a nine-year-old and she's an angel. And even the things she does, it's like, okay, whatever. It's nine, standard nine-year-old behavior. Okay. My teenagers, even when they were young, 10, 11, you know, they're doing stupid kid shit, but that's what they do. But what could have warranted this? I, you know, even at the teenager level, I can understand, you know, if teenagers get out of hand, I can get violent. Things can happen. They get bigger and they can get in your face and they can get more angry and everything else. Specifically, if they have issues like from trauma that you've probably dealt to them. Um, I get that with teenagers, but not a 10 and an eight year old. He's just going to gloss that over. He's like, what you think love is, is buying your kids shit. And no, we don't. Most of us do not believe that. Some do. I will agree with him on that, but no, we don't. What we think love is, is inclusivity is engagement. It's forgiveness when it's warranted. And it's not being a complete and utter parent Nazi. And the world has this message and, and society has listened to the words, the world meaning, Anybody who doesn't believe in Jesus. I swear to God, that's what he means there. He, they always, Christians and Christianese and the world of Christianity, it, they call it secularism or the world. 
And there's not any more divisive language you can have when the church is supposed to be completely inclusive of everybody. But the church puts up this wall around itself saying, that's the world, everybody. Be scared of the world. Don't engage with the world. That's the world. You're the world too, church. It's supposed to be a light in that world, by the way. Into it. Hook, line, and sinker. That love looks like commercialism. He's reading. No. No, it doesn't. Love looks like your kid gets that big thing. Look They're just making this shit up, man. No, it's not. Nobody believes that, dude. We uh, he's he's changing the subject, right? He's deflecting big time here. Nobody's saying that we you, we we don't think you love your children. We're saying you're being unfair douchebags to your children, and you're saying, "Well, you think love is presence?" No, we don't. We think love is love. Dick. Love looks like the magical Christmas, and the magical Christmas is more, more, more. Buy more, more. Again, this is massive deflection right now. I've never seen this. He's deflecting. Nobody cares about the amount or what you gave them. What we care about is that you literally excluded them from all of it. I don't care if they would have gotten... A f I mean, if, they're, if you're angry at your kids for being a bunch of de douchebags, then get them less. Or just say, you know what? I know that big thing you wanted this year. We're just we're withholding that this year just because we think you could have done better. I could almost even be there with you. But excluding from one of the most important times of year, specifically as a Mormon Christian, okay? The birth of Jesus, the most important season, the reason for everything. You guys have made it about the gifting. You guys have made it about that stuff because you're punishing with it. You're not even realizing the irony of all that. So you're, you're punishing your kids by taking away the thing that looks like love to them, or so you say. Okay, and, you, and during a season when it's not about that anyway. But if you're using it as a punishment and you can't see that it means something, then I don't understand what you're talking about here. You're saying the rest of the world is like, well, you're an asshole for taking kids. Yeah, you are. But you're like, well, that's, that's not what we're doing. You absolutely did the thing. And then you say, we're gifting these other things. Which would make sense if you weren't complete terrible parents. Like, it would make sense if every bit that you do was loving and not super gross. We w I might even be with you there. Hey, you know, for the most part, these guys are really loving of their children. So at this point, but they're not. Remember what Ruby does. Ruby is a tyrant as a parent. A tyrant. Her, her kids hate her. Hate her. Big, big boxes. Big red bows. Okay. That's love. If you love your children... That's what you're going to do. This cocky behavior, this like utter, like we're better than you. And you guys think it's about presence. And he's just sitting here with his BYU professor hat on and be like, you guys think it's this. And it's a big red ass bow. Listen, no, let's establish it. Nobody has said anything like that. And the fact that you're deflecting to that means that you have no idea what people are angry about. It doesn't even look like you read the comments then wiener. The, the focus has been removed entirely from what love really is. I hope he explains what it is then so, so we can all understand it. What about that family that, that doesn't have anything? What about them? What about them? Does, <laughs> I don't understand what he's saying here. So because they can afford Christmas for their kids and they don't give it to them. The people that can't afford their kids, that's the same? No, they still love their children. They still include them in Christmas. What is he saying here? I don't think he understands what, what's going on. So can they not Can they not feel the spirit of, of the Savior at Christmas time? I would. Now it's the spirit of the Savior. Okay, you've changed. You've changed the parameters. You've moved the goalposts. And no, I grew up like he's saying, those kids who are poor. I promise you this, people. Poor kids at Christmas get shit. Okay. If not, they're the ones when it comes to Christmas and the reason for the season, the time of year, charitable giving is so high. People are giving so much. There are so many resources for poor people. Do you know how I know this? Cause I was poor and Christmas was still the best time of the year. Every single year, no matter how poor, no matter how little we had, if we were homeless, which we were at points in my life. Okay. If we were on welfare and didn't have any money, it didn't matter. There are so many people willing to give these kids who have poor Christmases good Christmases. I promise you. He has no idea because he's disconnected. He's never been poor. And they live in a, they live in a bubble outside of it. They don't even serve anybody that's poor. Mormon churches don't serve the poor. Argue that if he had the choice, 
to be the savior that is if he had the choice to be in that big room with all those presents or in that little room with that family that has uh, I don't know a bowl of porridge and, and nothing what dude this isn't a Disney special with like a Scrooge McDuck and Mickey Mouse, this is not how this works, everybody. We live in the richest countries in the world, Canada and the U.S., okay? It's not what he thinks it is. It really isn't. What is he saying? He would be in that little room. No, Jesus would be in both rooms. Is this guy really a, a like, does he understand theology at all? Jesus would be in both and would love both equally. What is he saying? Yeah, this guy doesn't know anything about anything. That's, that's good. Good to know. That not only their failure of Mormons, they don't like guys. If you don't understand Mormonism and everything else, they they're basically a mirror of like the best parts of most religions. Meaning like there's no hell, so you don't have to worry about that really. There's outer darkness. There's planets. There's you know patriarchy. Guys get more wives if they want. Like they it's they take the best of all the religions and put it together. Mormons just ew. They, they every time I see these people and they start talking about theology and what they believe, it rubs me even worse. They just get worse. Ugh. That's what I've learned. So, sorry, let's recap what he just said. I've learned that Jesus would be in the room with the poor people and not the people that have more. Okay. Nope, Jesus literally hung out with every single person. Rich, poor, sick, everybody. Jesus was literally perfect and would never exclude anybody based on anything. He loves the rich and the poor equally. Where is he getting this shit, man? Are you saying that you sh you want to be poor now? I don't understand. Because then, if this is the case that he's saying this theolo theologically, your theology's off, bro. Then why don't you give everything away and become poor? If you think Jesus is going to be with them, why are you continuing to be rich then? Hmm. Seems like you'd want to be closer to Jesus. I'll take it. Send me the money. And and the greatest gift that I could have received, going hair back to my experiences that I shared oh. as a child, would have been an outcome. A Christmas just like the one Ruby described. What, where you didn't get anything and your friend, your brother and sisters open all their presents in front of you? Sounds sounds like you're, <laughs> sounds super made up, dude. <laughs> you're doing great, sweetie. Where I had all of those fears and dis all of those distractions taken away and I was forced to come face to face with the fears that I had. So he's telling me he didn't. That's what he's telling us, everybody. Listen to what he's saying here. I can t I'm can. i tearing this shit to shreds. This is such bullshit what he's saying here. I wish I would have had that happen to me. Why? You seem like you're doing okay, bro. You didn't go to jail. You're not selling, you're not selling meth laced with fentanyl on the streets. You're literally wealthy AF. You have six kids. You live in a mini mansion. You guys have more money than you know what to do with. And you wish you would have not gotten a Christmas when you were young? What is he saying? This is all deflection and justification for the shit that they did. And this is not over, guys. This is like, I, I honestly believe that we already knew Eight Passengers was on the decline. This was like the freaking straw that broke the camel's back, as far as I'm concerned. They don't even, aren't even connected to their family anymore. We don't know. I'm sure it'll come out eventually. They don't go to any of the events. The other families don't talk to them anymore. Something happened. These people went to the, to the rogue right of, of their religion and just embedded themselves there something went on and this is the behavior because their family's like why would you not give two of your children christmas are you effing out of your minds because what because joseph smith told you that this is probably what you should do get up give me a break oh that would have been loving oh i'm sure again was your outcome wrong did you what happened did you go to jail you went you had turned out fine bro except that you think it's okay to exploit children i don't know where that came from that would have been tender sure maybe it would have broken the cycle that ravaged my life for the next what three decades this guy had a negative cycle ravaging his life for three decades he's only what 45 you telling me from the, so he basically was a normal teenager way telling us ravaged your life until you were 35 45 whatever 30 years so he's been telling us ever so even in the past recently He's had his life ravaged. What is he saying? What? What? That is so powerful. No, it wasn't powerful, lady. That was not powerful. That was a lie. This guy lives with a silver spoon stuck up his ass on Mormon Cloud 9, rich as F, as a professor at a BYU university, living in a mansion, driving expensive vehicles, going on vacations, has kids, and are very 
Apparently they're very fertile. Doesn't have any hair, but whatever. Okay. Are you, t- what is he saying right now? He, he basically in one hand said, poor people love Jesus, love them more. We should be like that. And on the other hand, he's like, you know what? I hate my upbringing, even though I was like the most privileged person ever. Look, I'm not one to say, you know, white privilege, because I don't believe it exists, but class privilege absolutely exists. This guy is the embodiment of class privilege. That's class planning, as far as I'm concerned. I can't believe this guy. I can't believe it. I, as a parent, just sitting here listening to you say that, say, I want to love my children. So here's how you do it. And this lady is, they're literally advocating, we're going to go to her video next, for literally taking away one of the most important times of year, regardless of anything else. Look, I know kids can be assholes. I have asshole kids. They are assholes a lot of the times, but you don't take this away. And we all agree. I think most of us who are super angry with this, this was the one thing you didn't take away, Kevin and Ruby. Don't take this away. And she's like, I like it. Very good. I'm in my ugly house coat with this. Where are you sitting next to the sun? Is Joseph Smith next to you with like his light casting? What's going on with the light? I want to love my children. <sighs> And the only way to actually give love is to learn for myself what truth is. The only way to love your children is to learn what truth is. That's what she just said. Don't forget that. This is a person paid probably pretty well for what she's about to say here. And incorporate truth in my life by using my agency to choose it. Christianese. Meaning, I don't know what she said there. I, I, I'm trying to... Okay, so the only thing in life important is to understand truth and use my agency to do some shit to it. Why don't you speak in terms that normal people can understand? Okay, what eight? What as your agency as the parent to say no? You guys don't have Christmas. What are they saying here? What the f? So again, the invitation is come and learn about truth, so that you can use this beautiful gift of choice that you've been given to choose truth rather than distortion. Again, 10 and 8 years old, everybody. Let's not forget that. I can I can understand this if they're older teenagers. I can understand that, guys. I will be with people on that. Because I don't want to like exclude parents who have to, who are struggling with, with teenagers right now. Okay. I'm not saying teenagers. Let's just take them out of this. That's a whole different world than a 10 and an 8-year-old. These people are sitting here almost bullying against a 10 and an 8-year-old, everybody, to advocate for them to have nothing at Christmas. If you, you, why is it only Christmas? Why can't you just say, you know what? This year, we're going to try something else. Christmas is still on, but there's other things we can do. But you took away the most important thing. And the reason for the season was Jesus. And now you've tainted that for these kids. If you wanted them to learn that Jesus is all about love and grace and understanding and forgiveness. And, and I'll bring you back to the cross every single time, okay? When Jesus is hanging on this cross. I'll bring you back every single time to this moment. It's the most powerful moment, I think, next to the resurrection in the Bible, where the friggin' thief who probably killed, murdered, and everybody else, and another thief or whatever, murderer or rapist was on the thing, and the thief said, hey, man, I was wrong. Well, can I come with you? And Jesus, and the other guy's like, why are you talking to him? Blah, blah, blah. You know, if you're a God, do this, all that. Jesus, you know, the one guy was a complete dickhead right to the end, and the one guy repented right at the last second of his life. And he's like, I'll see you in heaven, bro. That's powerful shit. So this, this Jesus that you're talking about, this person that this reason for the season is, you just tainted the entire reason by using it as a punishment against your children. Don't do that. You should never tie that shit together because they are. They're tying it all together in a neat little bow. It's a reason for the season, Jesus and presence and love. And this, but at this moment, we're going to use this as a leverage to move a boulder to f*** you over. Merry Christmas, everybody. Jesus loves you. Give me a break. His reality is, is that me not <clears throat> recognizing the power of my agency affects me. And it also affects this bullshit rhetoric doesn't help anybody. These people, all they do is they're not to use $5,000 words and shit like that, that they learned at church. And it doesn't help anybody because it, it's just virtue signaling. Say what you mean to say and stop making up bullshit phrases. Everybody that I interact with. Say agency one more time. Okay. Oh, this is a little bit of a longer video. I know, guys, this is gonna be a long video, but we have to get to the bottom of this shit, and I have to, I have to debunk everything for you. As a person who went to Bible college, who understands, I think, to a degree, the Bible and its theology. Okay, I'm not saying I believe everything in it. Ah, uh, maybe I do. I'm, I just, I just sort of understand it more than the regular Joe because I was learned in it. I was a pastor, and so I was immersed in the Bible and its culture and religion. Since I was 12. So I know a little bit. So I'm glad to be able to be a, an advocate to show you guys 
from somebody who has left ministry, who still loves Jesus, who hates religion. I hope that makes sense because these people are wolf in sheep's clothing and I have to derobe, I have to disrobe them. So you can see that they are wolf, that they are, they, th- th- so you can see the wolf that they are. Okay. This is bullshit. Ruby and Frank or Kevin, <laughs> Frank, Frankie, terrible people. And I'm sorry. What he just said there made absolutely zero sense. And they're all like, that was so profound. You didn't say shit, bro. You didn't say shit that made any sense to anybody. He made it worse, actually. It's cool. Cool beans. I'm upset right now. Because, because they use their religion as a, as a hammer instead of a corrective key or a tool. It's a hammer. Mormons use it as a f- hammer. I got to get Jordan McKay back on. Maybe just talk theology about the, the Mormon and religion in general being used as a hammer. That's a good topic. All right, let's, let's watch Jody, who does not have a doctorate in this shit, okay? She probably took a course online. Merry Christmas 2021. My name is Jody Hildebrand, and I am the CEO and founder of Connections Club. Look, stop calling yourself a CEO if you have an online course for kids. Okay, you're not a C- you're the chief executive officer. Just say that you run the shit. Okay, you're the you're you run, run the website. Stop calling yourself a CEO. I'm the CEO of this damn ice coffee, and I'm the CEO of creepy makeup, <laughs> and I'm the CEO of shitty peanut butter cookies, <laughs> vinegar socks, and haunted wooden spoons. Sorry, we needed a little bit of a palate cleanser. Okay, this shit is deep and dark, and I don't and people don't take this seriously enough. Mushroom. And I was deeply, deeply saddened by um, some of the comments that have been made on um, our social media platform in a... Re- okay, Boomer. <laughs> I was deeply saddened by the things I was reading on our Facebooks. <laughs> Chill. Reactionary measure to uh, the couples conference that we had last weekend, or couples work. I'd love to know how much they paid Frank, Frankie, and Ruby <laughs> to do that. And they got paid probably quite handsomely shock that we had talking about truth and distortion and for those of you who decided to be aggressive and mean and use foul language and be attacking um all of those people would be choosing to live in distortion which means they're not willing to be empathic they're not willing to stop and think about their responsibility okay they're just reacting to something that they disagree with Without being thoughtful about what exactly was being shared. No, 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 no. Welcome to the internet, lady! What? So, anybody who doesn't agree with me lives in distortion. Let me tell you about the distortion that we all see, okay? You want to talk about distortion? And I think we have a good point, a lot of us who are standing up to this shitty behavior. It's not distortion to say, hey, look, there are other avenues rather than take away the reason for the season, Jesus and family and forgiveness, the best time of the year to use it as a hammer of punishment for your children. There are better options. There are many other options. East, give Easter. Well, now that's resurrection. Don't do Easter. I'm just saying there are other options. We're all upset, specifically kids like me who, who take Christmas as a time that's so important. Right? This is the only time in my life growing up that I ever had good memories. And so, yes, maybe I'm a little bit more biased on the edge of like, okay, don't ever take that away from a kid ever, ever. There's no reason to do it. There are other avenues you can use. So, again, sitting there saying, well, you're just distorted and you can't empathize with whatever. Lady, you're, you're full of shit. Everybody is right about this. You guys are the ones who are wrong. Read the room. Read the room. Way smarter people than you are calling your shit out. Okay, I'm not saying I am, but I'm saying there's thousands of people enough that you have to shut off your comment sections in order to mitigate the disaster of what you've just done. Don't ever, and let's never forget, okay, the ad that they used to make money from those two children that got nothing. I cannot believe that they don't even, can't see that hypocrisy. Holy shit! So those of you who sincerely have questions, I want to respond to those. So oh, okay. one of the questions is, um, it, was this manipulative? The answer is yes to that. Got it? No, I got it. No, I, the, the answer was so easy. Okay, I have a question for you. <laughs> is what they did manipulative? Right, that's what I said. Yeah, it's, the only, it's a one word answer. Very simple. It's very manipulative. And um, this lady here, no, I think her name's, I don't know, Jube Jube, Jody, Jody. Her name is Jody. And Jody has a Columbia jacket on. And she has a uh, degree from, uh, she has a degree that she printed from Google. I know. It's, probably doesn't. Okay, I'll call you back. Well, I'll just I'll finish this up here. I love you. Bye. No, bye. 
Bye. Yeah, let's hear what she has to say. So the answer is yes, but let's see how she distorts this. Uh, is this going to cause childhood trauma? And then the last question was, young children show up selfishly. Uh, why do something according to... Did you hear a stomach go... Brrr. Yo, Jody, get yourself some nutrients. These particular comments that look drastic. Um, I want to respond to those. Thank so, you. Okay, here we go. I have dedicated my life to truth. And truth... When somebody says this phrase to you, dedicate your life to truth, that's political speak for I swindle people out of a lot of money. <laughs> that's what this is. You can dedicate yourself to truth at all. If you live in the Mormon culture, you've not dedicated yourself to truth. You've dedicated yourself to lies, to a patriarchy. You've dedicated yourself to racism. You've dedicated yourself to sending people, to outcasting people who don't believe what you believe in. There is no truth in Mormon culture. Just ask anybody who's left it how much truth there is afterwards. Cool? All right. We work, We good there? No, I'm good. You're good. I'm good. We're good. Truth has been hated since the beginning of time. Since Adam and Eve, truth has been hated. So it doesn't surprise what? me that... Where are you, what, is your, what is your theological basis for that statement? Truth has been hated since Adam and Eve? They didn't hate the truth. They got swindled. That distortion is attacking truth. And those of you who have been mean and aggressive and hateful in your comments you are the reason why there's so much distortion in the world because you keep perpetuating it <laughs> those of you who are sincere and really would like to know like why are these parents kevin and ruby doing let me stop you there <laughs> those of you who don't believe what i believe are distorted those of you who believe that we believe you're in the inner circle let me just play something for you finn get lost I mean, who hires this lady? What they're doing. I'd like to respond to that. Kevin and Ruby have six children and they have learned how to live in truth. And so I can't. Is that so? Really? Is that so? Well, let me just shed a little bit of light on that for you guys. There is no truth in the exploitation of children. Regardless of what, you, what stance you have, most people will come to agree at some point or other because they cannot counteract this one point. That exploiting your children's privacy, everything, medical histories, puberty, periods, sex, kissing, dancing, dating, problems, temper tantrums, issues galore on the internet for monetary returns is wrong on every single level. There is no way you can say that that is right. Okay, you can say that there are levels to it, like there's some family vloggers that might have them in passing, and so it's not such a big deal. But when it comes to Ruby 8 passengers and these other family vloggers that do this, there is no truth here. As soon as that has happened, you have erased everything that good that could have come from it, because you, at its core, have exploited, therefore have sinned, in the eyes of God, in my opinion, at your entire life. Okay, so let's just start there at that fundamental baseline. Cool? Excellent. I can't explain all of the details in three minutes. It's nine minutes. Let me just describe to you some of the principles that they're using to govern their decisions. Okay, politician. Several of their children, two of their children in particular, have been making choices that have been very, very selfish. They're 10 and 8. I hope she says that next. And you know what? 10 and 8-year-olds, if you're a parenting professional, if you're like a person who lives in this world... And I almost want to bring on Dr. Kirk for this guy. Maybe I should. Is the idea that 10 and 8 year olds really, are they really doing something that terrible that they warrant this type of repercussion? Again, maybe in some levels, some kids have done some craziness, but not these two. These kids grew up in a fundamental Mormon home. What could they possibly have done wrong? I want them to come out and tell us. I would never advocate for this ever. But at this point in their walk, in this, this ratio that they're getting, we need to know. Maybe we're all wrong, Right? Don't tell us like the specifics. I maybe we need to know because they're just because if it was just you forgot your lunch one day or you swore or I don't know you I don't know I don't know what the ten and eight year old could have done wrong. I really don't. Especially if you go to a Mormon school, you grew up and you go to a Mormon church, you grew up in a fundamental Mormon home. I don't understand what these what these kids possibly could have done wrong. Did they call Joseph Smith an asshole? What happened? And when someone starts becoming selfish. They don't feel empathy for people any longer. 
I hope you can back that statement up with some proof and some facts and shit like that. What? Everybody inherently has some selfish tendencies to them. Okay. That is human nature. So are you saying I can't be empathetic to somebody else because I have tendencies towards being selfish? Everybody's selfish to a degree. I mean, some are less than others, but to a degree, there are some things that you hold selfishly. That is human nature. Where are they coming up with these blanket ass statements? Where is this from? What, what study did she take? It's really clear by some of the comments that have been made that these children or these young adults don't feel empathy. They're not young adults. They're children. Don't call them young adults. And the fact that she said young adults is a deflection tactic. They're not young adults yet. I'd say young adult 13 and above. They're 10 and 8. They are children. For people. And so they don't even know me and they've attacked me personally. They've sent messages of I'm going to you know, destroy you. I'm going to attack your... Your Google reviews, I'm going to hurt you if you do not do what I tell you to do. No. Welcome to the internet, lady. And I don't never advocate for this. And I'm sorry you've done gone through this, Jody. If you live on the internet and you are going to make your living on this with strong opinions like you are doing now, you got to be ready for it. I don't condone it, but it happens. And it's mostly through a bunch of dick faces. They're not going to follow through on it. Just report it. and never should happen. But at the same time... You've elicited this type of response because of what you guys are doubling down on here. You don't deserve it. You don't deserve to be threatened. I'm not saying that. But what I'm saying is that you deserve the, the, the flack that you're getting from regular parents who are saying, what the F? You deserve that. You deserve the ratio. That is all distorted behavior. And it's coming God. from a place of Stay distorted one more time. Incredible selfishness, which at the base of that is distortion. Oh my God. So Ruby and Kevin have seen these behaviors in their two children. And they are desperately concerned about their eternal and um, their choices that they're going to make throughout their life. They're desperately scared for their eternal life. That's what they're saying here. And as a, as a person who believes in Jesus, I understand that to a degree, except it's Mormons. And so their shit, their, etern their eternity is bullshit. So sorry. If you believe that you're effing weird. If you believe in the idea of Mormon, heaven and planets and outer darkness and TK smoothie shit and all that. If you believe that stuff, there is something inherently wrong with your brain. Like, and I, and people could say that about me who believe in Jesus. You can actually say that about me too. And I can understand why. Okay. But it's the religion in the end. The reason I believe what I believe, what Jesus said is because Jesus only commanded us to do one thing. And if you don't believe in Jesus, that's okay. You can still do the one thing. And I think you'd agree with me. Love people. Literally, we all fail at it a hundred percent, but that's all we were ever told to do. We were not told to smite our enemies. We're told to love them. Okay. We're not told to hate anybody. We're told to love them. Okay. We're, t we're taught to turn the cheek. We're taught to give to Caesar what is Caesar's. But in the end, we are taught one effing thing from Jesus. One thing. And that is why I believe inherently that this is the one true person to follow. Regardless of what you think with the Bible or religion in general. Okay. Cause I'm post-Christian meaning that I believe in Jesus and his teachings and what he said and who he was. I just don't believe in all the trappings of religion and churches and brick and mortar areas and shit like that. Okay. So it's, it's really, really difficult to, to kind of tie it down into one sentence, but that's it. Inherently, it's why I believe what I believe. Whereas Mormonism takes Jesus out of the equation. They say they put him in there, but he's just a, he's an afterthought. Okay. Mormonism is inherently rooted in lies. A hundred percent of somebody who was perverted. And I guess we're going to have to have more conversations with Jordan. I'm going to have to have a hard conversation with them about this next because they know more about their theology and I know more about my theology and some of them intersect. But Mormon culture and Mormonism and religion itself is built off of lies and copycats based on men who wanted to have multiple wives and married a 14-year-old girl. Right there at that moment in life, everybody should have realized when that came out, nope, you cannot believe this bullshit. It's not rooted in any merit whatsoever. What Jesus said and the cross that happened with the thief and then the resurrection is everything you need to know if you believe that. Okay, you don't, I'm not saying you have to believe it. I'm just saying these people are so distorted in what they believe that they, it, worry, it makes them parent in a way that is super detrimental to their children who will turn away from the faith because of all the trauma they experienced because of said religion. I don't know how they don't see this. It's crazy. And so they are running interference with them and inviting them to pause and be thoughtful about what it is that they're choosing. Listen to this language, okay? Say this to a kid. I'm inviting you to not have any Christmas presents. And I'm going to offer you the gift of hate. 
gift of using my religion as a hammer. The language matters here, everybody. She's trying to soften it. Just, if you're going to do this, be real. Look, the kids were acting up. They're acting a fool. And we took Christmas away. That's it. Don't be like, we're going to offer you this lovely gift of nothing. Give me a break. That's why we're mad, everybody. It makes no rational sense. It does not support truth to have someone aggress and attack and be selfish and hateful and then hand them some kind of an offering called a gift, a tangible gift, and say, hey, hey, let me reinforce your aggression. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Does this woman have kids? Have you ever been around kids, lady? What? It doesn't make sense to give a kid a gift if they're acting a fool, like every kid who is learning the fundamentals of living in a society, social cues, understanding lies, understanding betrayal, understanding all these things as they get older, 10 and eight, they're not there yet, everybody. They're just being 10 and eight. And let me remind you, Jody, that who, who are they mirroring? Who do they have to mirror in their lives? Kevin and Ruby. At what point did Kevin and Ruby say, you know what? Maybe some of this is us and they're mirroring our selfish behavior. Like not giving my five-year-old a lunch, taking away my kid's shit and making them pay me for it. Taking away their phones for months, sending them off to wilderness camps, making them sleep on a beanbag chair, not letting them have a bathroom door, yelling at them for spilling nail polish, yelling at them for me knocking over my favorite dish. At what point did Kevin and Ruby take any responsibility at all for the behavior of their children? They don't mention this ever in this parenting course. I hope you sit down and say, you know what? Have you guys ever thought to look at your own shit? Because even as a dad, um, yeah, I can already see some of my behaviors rubbing my negative shit that I have to deal with as a parent rubbing off of my kids. And I check it quick, fast. I see it. I'm like, shit. Boom. I'm reversing that. If you're not aware, if you can't be self-aware of the shit that your kids are mirroring, there's got to be some level of responsibility on Kevin and Ruby's shoulders here. Can we agree on that? Nobody mentions that. What Kevin and Ruby are doing, and if you'll watch the whole video, you'll hear them say this, they are offering them gifts that are not of a tangible nature. <sighs> the language matters, again, they're not offering them gifts of anything. These are, these are called parenting traits. These are called loving parenting traits. These are things you should give your kids for free. So why are you waiting until they backed up and then give them those gifts? These are gifts that you inherently give them all throughout the year. These are things that are inherent, that are guaranteed to be the type, to be the guaranteed thing that they get. Those gifts of loving and, and correction and everything else, that shit is guaranteed. It's built into being a parent. So why are they waiting till now to give them those gifts? What? Again, the language matters. It's just, it's fluffed up bullshit language. It means nothing. Because we should be doing that all throughout the year. There's no reason we should not be doing that. And it sounds like they weren't doing it all of a sudden. You know what? Oh, shit. <laughs> Our bad. So instead of presents, let me just do the thing I should have been doing anyway. Okay. They're offering them the gift of learning to Stop be saying offering the gift of, and then followed up with punishment. Stop it. Responsible for themselves. They're offering them the gift of repentance of being willing to mm. turn from their way you cannot offer someone the gift of repentance everybody can you understand this for a second let's look let's, let's let's break that down theologically you cannot force somebody to repent of anything you can't give them a gift of repentance you can give someone a gift of forgiveness by saying i forgive you shouldn't be a gift anyway that should just be a natural course of action right but you can't say i'm giving you the gift of repentance what the f what does that mean i'm giving you the gift of something you should be doing that is on you to do in your heart. You cannot give repentance to anybody. Repentance is something you have to do of your own free will, okay? Free from any strings attached. Repentance is something a person has to give or has to do in order to be free from the hurt. Repentance is like, I have done something to you. I repent. I ask for forgiveness. You can't say, I'm giving you the gift of repentance and then it's a race. It doesn't make any sense. This is why this shit is bullshit. They don't even make any sense theologically, psychologically, clinically. Nothing that she just said there makes any sense to raising children. As soon as you say something like that is a massive red flag and you should ignore everything she says afterwards. And go back to God. They're offering them the gift of empathy. 
They spend many, many hours talking to their children and helping them understand. Oh, they don't. Why- they spend many, many hours putting a camera on them and sharing them with the world. That's what they spend many hours doing. If you think that Ruby spends many hours loving her children, she'd have a great relationship. We can see that shit with our eyes, everybody. We can see it. Even with the best things that she puts out of their life, it's still shitty. So imagine when the camera's not off. This lady doesn't know shit. It is that, that these boundaries are being set. And those of us who have lived on the planet longer than 30 years understand that Christmas is not something that you're, you know, Christmas, the way Christmas is being played out now, which is all commercialism, pretty much. Uh, It's been way longer than 30 years for commercialized Christmas. I'm 42. And that's kind of the part of it, sure. But it's it's the gift of giving at Christmas, everybody. Receiving is good. Sure, the kids love it. And it's, but as a parent, if you're over 30, you should know this, that the gift of giving is the most exciting part of this. To see the, the magic in their eyes, their light up, their excitement, they can't sleep, they're mowing down on candy all Christmas. I mean, Christmas is inherently all of those things rolled into one. And at its core, if you believe it, you can talk about Jesus too and say, you know, this is the reason for the season. And it's a celebration of the reason for the season. Jesus is the reason for the season in a lot of households. And the way we celebrate that is to give each other gifts to say, man, we're so excited about this season that we're going to give gifts and love one another and gather and eat and party and hug and wear ugly pajamas and get the shit that you want and to be excited about it, watch crazy movies. It's all part of the celebration of Christmas. To say that Jesus is the reason and not celebrate and it shouldn't be commercialized is, I don't agree with that. Maybe it shouldn't be... you know, people only commercialize it, sure. But at the same time, if you believe what I believe, that's the, that's the party, guys. That's the damn party. That's what it's for. So we spend money. We do the things. Good for the economy. We do all these things because it's the party. These Mormons don't party. You're not entitled to a tangible gift. You're not entitled. I just talked to a lovely man who said, you know, what happened to... Um, Is there something in her teeth? You know, s- you know back at my grandma's time... They got an orange. That- well, maybe that's because it was the 1929 Great Depression. So, way to compare apples to oranges, dumbass. Yeah, it was different back in the day. They didn't have the shit. We were, again, we're in the richest culture we've ever been in our life. We are the wealthiest we've ever been since the time started. So be it. Take the gifts, blessings, whatever you want to call them and use them. Okay, what happened when we got an orange? Because you were probably poor, dude. And I'm sure you didn't just get an orange, but yeah, it's also remember, you know, the great depression era. Let's, let's not forget that. Nobody got anything. It was all they got for Christmas and they were okay. so grateful. That's because that was a treat at Christmas. Cause nobody had anything. So when you got something, you still got something. What are they comparing this to? They're saying, okay, well, when you had nothing and you got something that you normally wouldn't get, that's a treat. That's great. That's what Christmas is now. You don't have the things and you get the things. So what are you comparing here? It's the same principle. We're grateful. We have a society now, and much of it's being driven by people who are under 30, who feel very entitled to get what they want. And for- Says the lady wearing a $100 sweater in probably a $100,000 car. Okay, hypocrite. People to give them what they want. Just like I shared a minute ago, I've had hateful comments with people saying, if you don't take this video down that I'm going to hurt you. I'm going to attack your report it. Your Google reviews. I mean, this is, I think she's just seen Google reviews and I think she's been ratioed on Google. Then don't have shitty principles. How about that? How about read the room a little bit and say, you know what guys, maybe we were wrong about this. You know, I've, I've, I've consulted with other people in my same world outside of Mormonism. I've consulted with other doctors, other counselors, and we all, you know what? We were a little bit wrong on that. Let's correct ourselves. The, pro- the problem here with these types of people is they can't be corrected when they're wrong. And we all know they're wrong. Why are they also getting ratioed like this? They're wrong. And when you cannot say, Hey man, I'm wrong about something, you will never be able to learn. I often am wrong about things and I will say, and I've got a video coming out very soon about how wrong I was about a certain case in real crime. And it's crazy, this story, but I'm going to own up to it and I'm going to come out and say how wrong I was, okay? And how stupid I was for believing something, okay? But if you can't, as a counselor, say I'm wrong because you think it's going to discredit you, you, all the other ratio you've gotten has already discredited you. So you should have just come out and said, shit, man, we were wrong about that. Consult other professionals. Horrible hatred coming towards someone they know nothing about, whether it's me or whether it's Kevin or Ruby, you know nothing about these two people. 
If you would be willing to humble yourselves and be curious about why they're doing what they're doing, you could watch this video and they would explain exactly why they're doing what they're doing. So, well, we heard it. Thanks. I wanted to <clears throat> respond to another question. Is this going to cause childhood trauma? I can answer this. Nah, they're wealthy. They're rich. The trauma that might come from it would be very, very small, but it's going to be a memory they'll have forever. I don't think this is going to ruin their future, but at the same time, this is only going to build onto the already trauma that they've had. And they're scared of their parents, everybody. They're strict beyond strict. They're scared. These kids walk on eggshells around their parents all the time. It's just one more brick in the trauma wall is what it is. I don't think it's going to hurt them that much. Maybe next year they'll be a little better, sure, but I don't think it's going to not as much as everybody thinks. So the reality is, is that there's nothing traumatic about this experience other than people's hateful, mean aggressive, foul language. Coming. <sighs> Stop focusing on language. People swear. It's been proven that people swear are more honest. Why don't you just do a little bit of swearing there, Jody? Jody sweater vest? And towards this, this lovely family. They're not lovely. Stop. You're being biased. You're supposed to be some kind of professional doctor here. You're being biased because you paid them to be on your platform. Stop. You're not looking at this as a professional for some reason, which s screams volumes to me. That's traumatic. What's going on inside their home is that principles of truth are being taught. And distortion is being less distortioned. And those two children in particular are learning how to be empathic. Those two children in particular are learning to lie to their parents when they do something wrong. To keep it from them. That the bond matters not. Those two kids are learning to be worse. They're learning... To be, to literally, they're just, they're literally learning how to avoid to get in trouble. That's it. They're not learning how to come clean on anything. They're like, hey, I'm not going to tell my mom that because I'm going to miss out on Christmas now. These kids are likely going to be the ones that go off the rails. They are going to hide everything from their parents. Kind and loving and considerate. And it has nothing to do with receiving a tangible gift. It does. Especially if it's your love language. So there's no trauma here. There's no trauma. Um, and you, you can't, first of all, Jody, you can't say that. Who are you to say there's no trauma? You don't know shit. You don't know in 10 years what's going to happen to these kids. You are speaking from a, you're like, nope, there isn't. You don't know anything. I, rem I remember the birthday that I missed. I've, it was eight years old and I'm th 42 and I remember it. And I have a terrible memory. Okay, everybody. That is a memory that has stuck with me. Has it hurt me? Has it been traumatic? No, but it's something I remember and I never learned from it because we are kids. That is what we did. We do not understand the ramifications of our future. That's where informed consent comes in. We do not see the outcome. We are too little. We are in our brains aren't developed enough to understand it. And yet they are cool with putting them on the internet without their consent. Why don't you talk about that, Jody? It says young children always go through a selfish stage. Yes, yes. Yes, that's all you need to say. Cool. Done? So we agree? Cool. What are you going to say next? To no. No, it's when yes. When a child acts selfish, quote unquote... It's not the same thing as an adult acting selfish because... Right. Because the adult knows. The children doesn't. The child doesn't. They don't have motive. Yeah. They are learning if the people around them... You're getting there. Them ...how to show empathy. You're getting there. She just admitted it, everybody. They are genuinely selfish because they... But without motive. They don't understand it. You got it. So what are we saying here? What are we talking about? You just admitted it. What is she? You shouldn't have said that, Jody. If a child is not taught how to be empathic, which means they have to have boundaries, they need to know when they're being um, selfish, when they're being mean spirited, when they're being uh, irresponsible, you have to reflect that to them. It have these kids been tested for certain things? Autism, ADHD, oppositional defiance disorder? Have they been tested for any of these things? Have they had. Have they had these things done? They can afford them. Have you tried? Have you looked? No, you just punish. Some of these things kids do in detachment disorders and walking on eggshells and living their lives in fear of their parents, that shit can be diagnosed. Why don't you figure that out instead of going to a quack who has no credentials to do what she does? If that is never taught to a child, they will grow up as an adult who is selfish. And so their children are not, it's not about them being selfish like an adult would be selfish. Yeah, it's just normal behavior. Now, are these two children learning to be empathic? Yes. 
and if they can okay okay so yes they are again why does it take this most important time of year to use as a hammer against it she, again if you are aware that you need to teach your kids how to be empathic why does it need to be at christmas why can't you just let that one slide and you got 365 days of the year to do it the other times okay she's admitting right here that they're doing it but you're doing it in the worst way possible continue to behave the way that they were behaving and the parents then reinforced that behavior with hey you know good job and here's five gifts or here's 10 gifts it would reinforce no it wouldn't no it wouldn't this this behavior that they don't agree with no because they set the standard and said if you're not behaved and they shouldn't have said it. The parents had the responsibility to not use Christmas as leverage. It should never have been a leverage point. Okay? Never should have even been that. That's on Ruby and Kevin. Should never have been a position of like, we'll take it away from you. Should have never said it. Because you could teach these values and principles outside of that. And as soon as you said that, you made that the end all. Okay, you said, well, that's it. And then, then you took it away. It did never. It never had to be on the table to begin with. Ever. So... And they're like, well, the kids, you know, I just admitted to you that kids don't understand their ramifications of their actions, except for when we told them that they're going to have ramifications of their actions, they still don't. And they still did the thing because that's what kids do. This behavior of not having compassion towards another person. So children, um, until they are taught and they are boundaried, will, will focus on self. And that is our job as the adults is to help them not focus on self and to be aware that there's other people who are being affected by their behavior. So are you saying that Ruby and Kevin aren't doing this and haven't been doing this their whole life? What are you saying? Again, this comes back to their behavior and the way that they've been parenting. What have they failed on at this point? If they've been teaching these principles about distortion and empathy and all these things, where, where are they going wrong then? Are they not doing it enough? What's happening here? All of a sudden, did it just happen? Again, if they are understanding of these principles, why aren't they teaching them throughout their entire lives? We teach our kids about empathy and, and generosity, and our kids are very, very generous. They're very empathetic. They're very loving and kind to everybody. Weston will tell you his damn life story to the cashier. Hi, I'm Weston. I'm six, and he'll tell you uh, the code to the safe. He'll tell you where he lives. This kid loves everybody, and he gives people just... If you ever receive a Weston hug, and they're called Weston No Reason Hugs, he'll just hug you. And it'll warm your effing heart. My kids are amazing. But they're also a -holes sometimes. But again, where did they go wrong? Everybody, let's put some blame on Kevin and Ruby. They're the parents, right? This is learned behavior. Bullying, learned behavior. Racism, learned behavior. Classism, re le it's learned behavior. This is on Ruby and Kevin, everybody. And everybody's, this lady specifically for the last eight minutes has blamed the kids every single time. So that last one, young children always go through a selfish stage. Why are they doing this drastic thing? Um, <laughs> drastic thing, like taking when she's just, again, watch the body language, watch the smile. <laughs> it's no biggie. It's just Christmas. <laughs> you silly bastards. You're just taking this blowing this way out of proportion for no reason. Watch the language. It matters. Watch the reactions. Kamala Harris laugh, all that kind of stuff. It matters. It's unfortunate that this is considered drastic. It, it's, it's. Oh. Well, it is. So just accept that it is and sh and change it it is it doesn't matter if you think it's unfortunate it is a lot of people think ways of doing things are unfortunate but the true reality is that pushback you're getting means that it is drastic and we all think it's drastic and so maybe just maybe just this once say ah we we're wrong sorry alarming that we live in a world that a parent is not um is not supported to teach their children principles of truth because really really i can i'm sorry i'm pausing so much but every time she says a f one effing phrase it's a lie we we don't support you because we want we don't want you to hurt your kids by not giving them christmas no we'll support you every other day of the year to teach them empathy and truth and understanding every other day of the year this day of the year this day of jesus's birth this day of celebration and partying should be reserved for that and not be used as leverage, as a hammer against your children. You think Jesus would say, please use my birthday as a place to correct your kids, please. Nope. As the world says, no, they're entitled to fill in the blank. No. Well, yeah. You know what? Yeah. 
children are, and this is like the most important time of year, especially for me, especially for kids who go through shit. Christmas is an entitlement. I'm sorry. Yes, it is. I know a lot of people will disagree with me on that. Everybody deserves to have at least some time of the year where it's just, you expect it to be amazing. Everybody is on doing the family things. Let's just, let's normalize being okay with that one selfish time of year. Let it be that way. I'm, I'm cool with that. You cool with that? Yeah. Let it be the year of entitlement. That one time of the year where you should expect to be happy. Everybody's, you know what? I mean, to a degree, you don't, kids aren't going to be like, yeah, I can smoke meth and I can definitely, you know, burn the house down. It's Christmas. No, I mean, I get what you're saying, but I'm saying, let this be that time of year that everything kind of happened that year. Just kind of just put that aside for a little while. Just, you know what? We're going to put it over there. Let's focus on the reason for the season, which is a big old party and family and celebration and forgiveness. And then at the end of the year, you know, new year, we'll, we'll talk about it. That can be a space where a kid can, can honestly be like, cool, this is safe for me. This moment, I know it's going to be great because that's the attitude my parents have. Well, apparently Kevin and Ruby are not going to follow the world. They're going to follow tr- Joseph Smith. truth. Oh. And they're going to share and teach their children how to be loving and kind. No, no, they're not. I mean, I would, I would believe you if that's actually what they were doing, but we have too much proof of Ruby being a complete and utter gross neglectful parent so no if there was no proof of the shit that she did and they did to them okay maybe i'll believe with you but we know too much because they put it out on the internet for us to see so apparently joe you haven't watched anything and um i again have been alarmed okay alarmed at the distortion at the hatred that has come towards me and the hatred that's come towards them that is the trauma here well maybe what you should do is reassess and say, whoa, 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 let's reverse this for a second. What did we get wrong? You are you alarmed? Are you alarmed because look at this is this is what this is. Let me let me teach you a little thing about humility for a second. And I'm saying I'm not, I'm not the most, most humble guy at all. I, I, I agree. But I understand the humility and is really a really important human trait. When I've gotten something wrong and I've been ratioed, I'm like, shit, what did I do wrong? How can I respect? How can I respond to this? How can I learn from it? You guys got this pushback at connections, spelt wrong anyway. Okay, um, why? Have you assessed why? Is it, are you just saying because you got hate that you're like, okay, well, that can't be. I mean, they hated me, so there's no way they're right. And missed the thousand other comments from concerned parents? Are you letting the hate cloud the thousand other normal concerns that parents have had? You need to take a step back, humble yourself, even in the sight of the Lord if you want, okay? And say, whoa, shit. I think these people are right. And you know, they're right because why else is there such a pushback? But you just want to focus on the 2% of hate that you get instead of the 98% of concerned of concerns that parents have that, that speaks a lot about who you guys are and you have no humility. And that means that you don't teach your kids humility because you're never wrong. You are, you are, you have no humility. That means that your kids will have no humility and you, the cycle continues because you're teaching them that you can never be wrong. Have anybody here raise your hand if you've apologized to your kids for anything they've ever done that you've done to them? Even if maybe you were a little bit right, but you overreact a little bit. Have you ever apologized to your kid? I have lots of times. Do you know what that does? That creates a space where they know that, oh shit, maybe he's wrong. And let me explain myself a little bit better because I know that you, you know that you're not always right. If you've never been able to apologize to your kids because you think that makes you weak or whatever, shit, you need to learn a lesson. They don't know humility because they've never seen it. Full stop. That is the drastic. That is the sad situation of our world that that people, and I'm not considering that most people, but there are some that want to hurt others because they don't agree with what another. Stop focusing on those douchebags. Those are just weirdos on the internet. You really didn't have to focus on them because there was tiny, tiny percentage of the people that were had a problem with this. And the fact that you're doing that is a deflection tactic. The person is doing so I hope that that's helpful. It's not. Um, that was the, you made it way worse. You're going to see much more of me and Ruby. We're Aren't going we? to be starting the new year talking about these particular issues. Let's be real. What we're going to do here is we're going to capitalize on this that we've got here. We're going to capitalize on the attention we've got and we're going to grow our base from this. We're going to actually continue to do more crazy shit like this because we see that it gives us high engagement. That's what we're going to do. And I'm going to race you every effing time. Because you deserve to be let, you deserve to be schooled in this shit. You guys have no idea what you're doing. Clearly, 
I wish you did. Maybe you need to go get different counseling outside of your culture and your Mormon religion. Please do yourself a favor and go seek secular help. You might be surprised. In more detail. So if you are interested in learning about truth, because that's where Ruby and I will stand is. If you're interested in learning about truth, do not listen to these people. Okay, <laughs> please don't. I've given you more truth bombs in this one episode than I've ever done in any of my videos ever. If you're interested in learning about truth, educate yourself. Look at all sides of the, the circle, every side of the situation. Okay. And then make a informed decision based on proper research from proper professionals, not Walmart certificates. Okay. It's on the line of truth. And if you see people starting from BYU, probably too. guaranteed this shit guaranteed. Guaranteed Columbia Vest here went to BYU. Attack us and starting to say things. Please know that truth has always been attacked and we're ready and, and willing to Are you? Okay. Um, stand and hold that line. And those of you who want to learn about truth and learn how to parent your children inside truth and create lovely beings that live in truth. Okay, I'm not going to let her say that shit anymore because that's bullshit. Jody, I invite you onto the show. And if you've seen any of my interviews with other creators and content creators I do not agree with, you know that I will be fully respectful. Okay? We will have parameters. We will discuss this. Parent to, I hope you're not a parent, but probably are, to a professional who teaches parents about this shit. Okay? Who, who has researched and done some things, who understands faith too. Okay? And pr parents from that type of perspective a little bit, um, I invite you onto the show to have a debate with me about everything you just said there. I am happy to be corrected if you can correct me. With like, I, maybe. I don't know if you can. Maybe you can. But I am happy to have you on the show if you want to talk about all the bullshit that you just spewed right here. And I will be completely and utterly respectful of you. And you go look at any interview I've ever done with somebody I disagree with. And you tell me if you have the balls to come on the show and talk to me. Because what you're doing is detrimental to these children in the end. Because you're, what you're doing is saying the parents are outside of blame of any of this. And again, I will say this again. This is the biggest truth bomb that came out of this episode. If you do not show humility to your children, they will not learn humility. You cannot force somebody to have humility without exhibiting it yourself. And you cannot force someone to repent. All of that is bullshit. And I'd love to see you back that up biblically. And I will accept the Mormon version of that if you just want to show it to me. Cool? All right. Well, that was shitty, but we needed to hear that. We needed to discuss this, and I'm going to bring on Dr. Kirk, see if he'll come on and talk about this. He is a psychologist, and he has a degree. He's a doctor, not a Walmart physician, okay? He's a real doctor, and he's sexy, and I love Dr. Kirk, and he always has something great to say. He's the one that taught me that the bond is the most important thing when it comes to your children. Without the bond, you have nothing. Ruby and Kevin have zero bond with their children because of the way they've decided to parent through a fundamental religious optic, through a fundamental religious platform, I guess. And that's where they're getting it wrong. And they don't even realize it. And it's scary as shit. So everybody take a deep breath. That was an episode you're probably going to want to watch again. Okay. Some of these things are really, really important. And I don't actually realize these things until they say the thing. And then I say the thing. That's how my brain works. And that's just how I work. And I actually started realizing a couple things while watching this. I'm not a perfect parent. Okay, I have problems with my kids. They're none of your business because I will never tell you my kids problems because that is not how I roll. I'm against that. Okay, I'm not a perfect parent, but I, I definitely am better than them. <laughs> and I understand the idea of learning, apologizing, being really empathetic, teaching your kids humility by showing them what humility looks like. Okay, I'm not perfect. Okay? We go through the same shit everybody else goes through. It's how you deal with it on the end that really matters. Okay, But you are awesome for being here and listening to this. I think you guys are all here because you kind of fundamentally believe what I believe. And I hope you guys are catching these truth bombs like I am. Because I'm learning with you. But you're beautiful and super valuable. And don't you ever damn well forget it. And I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs>